Hey now, pork loin, it is easily available, it's cheap, it can be delicious, and I've got a big piece of it right here. In fact, this is 1.688 kilograms of this, and I'm going to turn it into a, uh, a beautiful piece of charcuterie, very, very similar to my capicola that I like to make. In fact, it's going to be basically identical to the spicy capicola I, I make, other than the fact that the cut of meat itself is not the copa muscle. So let's see how it's done. So for ingredients, this is a really basic recipe. I'm using 3%, in this case it's pickling salt. You can use pickling salt, kosher salt, anything you want. We're just looking for not a lot of additives or anything crazy like that. I'm going for 0.25% cure number two, and that's because this is going to be a nice, lengthy, dry age piece of charcuterie. So we want that cure number two or prog powder number two. I'm going for also 0.25% of crushed red chili flakes, and that's because they're super light, and this is actually a decent amount of these chili flakes. And I'm doing that just because that's going to help kick up the spice level a little bit. Now I'm going to mix these up here to kind of help distribute that cure a little bit more amongst these other two ingredients. Perfect. I'm also going to be using this hot pepper paste here, and this stuff is awesome. I love using this on my capicola. You could also use like a, a Calabrian or Calabrian or Calabrian, I never know how to pronounce it, uh, pepper powder, but I have some of this open up, so I'm, I'm going to use that for this particular product. So on to the meat, which I've got right here. I've got this in a large meat tub. I really like applying cure and whatnot using these because I'm able to capture any ingredients that sort of splash off and then get them into the bag where everything will be curing. So I'm just going to rub this on here, applying it everywhere on the meat to ensure a half decent distribution. We're going to be curing this for a, a while, so there's going to be lots of opportunities for cure to kind of get around inside the bag and get every part of the meat, but this just kind of gives it a leg up initially. So now I'm going to need a second set of hands so I can get this into the bag here. All right, now the first thing I need a second set of hands for is just to hold my jar steady so I can get this paste out of here. So I'm not bothering to measure this. My, my plan is essentially just to get a good coating all the way around, rubbing this on, and uh, this is where all the flavor is going to come from with this particular meat. All right, so I think that's all I'm going to need for that. I'll just scoop up some of that extra stuff that came off here and get it back onto this pork. And now the second thing that I need these hands for is getting it into this bag. So I'm just going to adjust my angle and we will do that. All right, so now I've got this food saver bag. Perfect. And I'm just going to get all of this extra stuff the other nice thing, I suppose, about using this pepper paste is that I can then just kind of scrape with my beautifully gloved hands into the bag here to pick up any of the uh, extra cure and salt and flakes that might have fallen off when I initially applied this and get it into that bag. Because again, over the next month or so, uh, while it's curing in here, it's going to have a, an opportunity to distribute around. So. Time to get that vacuum sealed. So prior to vacuum sealing this, I'm just going to kind of moosh around this paste a little bit. Now, one thing I should have mentioned with this pork loin, I left that, that bit of a fat cap that was on there, even though I know that there's a little bit of that kind of silver skinny material underneath it, because I plan on using my slicer to, to shave this so thinly, that little bit of, uh, of um, Silver skin should not should not be a factor and I shouldn't really notice any kind of chewiness or, or anything like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and vacuum seal. Now a person could also just use like a large Ziploc bag to do this and I've done that before, uh, especially when I'm doing large bacon runs and whatnot. And I don't want to go through a ton of this material and I had Ziploc bags kicking around. Um, however, doing this, you can ensure that you're not going to have any kind of accidental 
uh, leakages or anything like that if the bag gets torn open. I also like to double seal it so I'll, I'll get two, two lines of that seal across there just to ensure that nothing leaks out. I do the same thing when I am cooking stuff using my precision cooker for sous vide cooking. And there we have it. You can see I've got the, the two lines across there and this is ready to now refrigerate and cure. So now that it's all sealed up, I'm going to toss this into the fridge and give it at least four weeks, which is more time than I need for actual curing for the, for the cure to penetrate and whatnot. But it's just going to give it a lot of nice extra time for this hot pepper paste, for those chili flakes, for everything to really be absorbed and get into this meat and just result in the most flavorful, flavorful piece of charcuterie I can get using these ingredients. So into the fridge every day or so, I'm just going to take it out, give it a nice little massage, kind of smoosh, that's a technical term, smoosh things around just a little bit and always be flipping it and whatnot during, uh, during that process. So if you're wondering how much of this paste I used, this is a 25 and a half ounce or 720 gram jar and I use right around half of it for this. So yeah, oh, look at all my disaster mess that I've got going on here. Perfect. All right, to the fridge. So there are several items that I have for this next step. First of all, I've got a collagen sheet. You can see the size here that I'm going to be using. I've got some nice big netting that I'll be able to use for hanging the, the charcuterie. I've got some scissors. I've got a little bit of vinegar just to help sanitize things. And then some hog ring pliers and some half inch hog rings just to kind of seal everything up. All right, so after five weeks, I am ready to deal with this here. I wound up giving it an extra week just because I sort of ran out of time and didn't have a chance to deal with it beforehand, but that's certainly not going to hurt it. So just using some cold water, I'm going to spray off a bunch of this hot pepper paste here because I'm going to give it a layer of some fresh stuff here just before I wrap it up. Prior to wrapping this in the collagen casing, I'm going to use some more of this same hot pepper paste. I feel ridiculous. I'm just going to point that out. I ran out of my proper vinyl gloves. So I've got these gloves I accidentally bought one time. It makes me feel like a cheesy sandwich artist or something like that. Anyway, let's just give a little, little bit of this paste on here just to give a bit more of that flavor while it dry ages. I don't want nearly as thick of a coating on this as I had originally. Just enough. And this will also really help that collagen casing adhere really nicely. So anyway, just like that. Perfect. All right, so I've got my collagen casing out. I have everything kind of sprayed down here really light, lightly with vinegar just to sort of eliminate any initial mold growth. I've got my beautiful piece of pork loin here. Now that it's down and I'm not going to touch it again, I can get rid of my horrible gloves. Yeah. I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to roll it like so. Let's get rid of that little bit of that paste. Rolling it along here. Now, I, I definitely have some overlap here with the collagen casing, but that is certainly not a big deal. And the purpose of using this casing, of course, is just to sort of help further restrict how quickly the moisture is lost and also just to offer a little bit of a protective coating here for the meat itself. And using half inch hog rings here because they're nice and big. So I'm going over quite a bit of bulk here. All right, so we've got that. Now I'm just going to give it some pokes. These little <laughs> stabs, I guess is more like it, with these prickers to help some of this air be able to escape, particularly once I've gone ahead and got the netting on here, because that'll help squish some of that out. So, just cut off some of that excess casing. And now I've got my netting here, and this has um, been sprayed down with vinegar as well, just for that same reason. And we'll just kind of roll it up like that to make it far nicer to slide in, like so. Rolling it up. Oh, we went a little bit too far initially, but that's okay. We'll just slide it down. Perfect. Just like that. Now I can go ahead and use 
use these hog ring pliers. It's pretty much the perfect amount on this end. So I won't have to trim away any of the netting. And then over here as well. My lovely assistant doesn't like me getting my hands in the way. <laughs> there we go. And just trim off a little bit of that excess there too. Just like that. Okay, so now I'm going to quickly get a weight on this and calculate my target, my target weight after 35% weight loss. I'll just kind of smoosh it around a little bit here, which will help some of those little air pockets disappear. There's already hardly anything in there, so perfect. So here we are. I have my original and my target weight with that 35% weight loss. And I just tied that on with a, a little string here. I like to use this painter's tape. It's just really easy to work with, and it shows up nicely inside the chamber. So now it's time to get this downstairs and hang. So I've got this pork loin now in the curing chamber. I've got it set at 73% relative humidity and 53 degrees Fahrenheit, and the waiting game really begins. I've got some nice looking little meat in here too. All right, so let's check out the weight on this. Capicola pork loin. So our target here was 11.35 and it's at 11.63. But actually that's with this weight. 11.35, so we are 19 grams heavy. I don't care, I'm going to pull it now. <laughs> okay, so after that seven weeks that this had in the uh, curing chamber, I'm going to unwrap it. And it's still in that collagen casing, but that's all good. There's a little bit of mold here, that's white mold. It's certainly not anything to be worried about. However, um, because I'm going to be vacuum sealing this, any mold that's in there will, it, it tends to get kind of gooey and nasty. So I'm just going to wash it off there. Just use a little bit of vinegar on this scrub brush. Toss this into this vacuum seal bag. I'm going to seal it up and then get it in the fridge and leave it for one to two months, depending on my patient's level, just for this to equalize. And then we can slice into it. Well, I've been very patient. I let this go just about four months and it should be very, very equalized and it is time to slice into it and taste it. The most exciting of days. First of all, we will remove the vacuum bag here. And I still have on the casing. So I'm just gonna cut this end off and peel it off just like so. And looking at this, I can still see some of those little pepper flakes on there, a little bit of that, a little bit of that hot pepper paste, but let's slice right into the middle here and see what we're working with. So there we are, really nice, even equalization throughout. It's funny, you can see how some of that paste actually worked its way in there. Gorgeous, let's taste. Okay, so I'm going to slice this up using my Avatku slicer. Ooh. I'm taking this off at the 0.5 setting. So it's really nice, really nice and thin. Just like that, you can, you can see through it, huh? Let's take off some slices here. Okay, I need to try it. Do, do, do. Here we go. That flavor, that pepper paste, just a little heat coming through. Mm. It's one of my favorite flavors, probably my favorite charcuterie flavor is this Capicola recipe. And honestly, it's, it's different using the pork loin. You don't have that, uh, all that really nice, those big thick ribbons of fat running through the meat, but you do have some fat going, going around the the little fat cap that was on there. There's little, little bits of fat um, in the actual meat itself, right? And so it's a little bit firmer, I would say, than the Capicola. Not quite as light and sort of fluffy when you eat it, but the flavor is amazing. And for the price, it's really hard to go wrong. So huge proponent of, of curing and dry aging these, uh, these pork loins, absolutely fabulous. So. Give it a whirl if you haven't, and until next time, keep it at 11.